Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. You're, you're back together with the back, Better Together show at Ra- Ramadan Radio in Wolverhampton, 87.9 FM. Uh, you're with my co hosts, Atiko Rahman, Johan, and Shafi Rahman. You're all lads. Oh, Ridwan is singing to himself there. Sorry about that. Carry on. Yeah. So, lads, uh, what's the topic today is what? Intentions? Intentions. So intentions. Are we get ever going to have a start where there's not a technical fault? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, wow. yeah. Oh, God. Wow, I don't know if the listeners are listening, um, but we were playing Allah Knows by Zayn Bika because we thought, you know, what a better way to start. Yeah. Absolutely. With yeah. the show with uh, intentions, yeah. With the, the show with intentions. Right. I mean, I mean, it was it would have been a nice start if we did start with the music, but for now, we'll just get to it, the topic and maybe we'll play the, well, the we sheet after. Yeah. Um, so, <coughs> intentions, that's what we're talking about today. Ridwan wanted to talk about it, so we're going to let him uh, introduce why he wanted to talk about it. We've all got a thing or two to say about intentions, inshallah. So I think with the intentions, they're not spoken enough about. I mean, a lot of people don't understand the point in giving intentions when doing something. In terms of being Islamic or just doing something righteous, including praying, uh, giving in charity, just in general, I think the idea and uh, idea behind it and the hadiths and and the the sunnah behind doing not giving intention is key and it's very important. I don't feel like it's not talk, spoken about enough. I mean, it's something that you have to know, you have to do when doing something. Um, I mean, today we're going to get some opinions from all the boys. Um, we're going to s- talk about their ideas and what their knowledge between intentions are when doing something in terms of Ramadan or just in, in general. I mean, as far as I'm aware, Salam alaikum, everybody, by the way, it's me, Johan here. Um, as far as I'm aware, that Atik, you went to an Islamic school. I did, yes. And I believe all the main books of a hadith, mm-hmm. I mean, if it's not too much for me to say, because I'm just a layman, starts off with the hadith, Inna mala amalu bin Yeah, exactly. Right, so Correct, yeah. every action is dependent upon its intentions. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I guess that, that pretty much lays the foundation for, for Muslims in general, really, and how much intentions weigh uh, behind actions. Mm. So that basically, what, what I understand from that is that you can literally do all the good deeds in the world, but if your intentions corrupted, um, you might not even get rewarded for them, yeah, right? Exactly. But intentions, another thing. Like if you look at, if you look, if you think about it, is that it's between you and Allah only. Mm. Nobody can literally, like nobody on planet Earth can mm. can know what's going on in your mind. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you can say whatever you want from your mouth, and you can say Subhanallah, Inshallah, for the sake of Allah. Mm. But at the same time, it might not even be that way. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So yeah. it's one of those things where I feel like it's it's such a it's it's one of those actions where it's it's literally between you and your Rabb, yeah, right? Exactly. And if you are corrupt in that particular sense, then then you're gonna have to answer for that on the day of Yom Al Qiyamah. Exactly, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So it's a, it's a big big thing, and I think um, I mean I don't, I don't know about you, like you said, uh, you you felt as though it doesn't get spoken enough about yeah, when it comes 100%. to. Um, I feel like it has, in my experiences, yeah. a lot of people have spoken a lot, many a times about intentions. Even when I started with with the whole singing thing. One of the first pieces of advice I was given by many, many people, many people that were close to me, and they, these were like madrasa graduates, um, people that I respect quite highly. They, the first thing they gave me advice for was regarding my intentions. Mm. They said, if your intention is not in the right place, and if Allah grants you fame, you know, Allah grants you success within within this within this field, mm. then this will be a source of um, doom for you. Do you know what I mean? Going on your point, intentions. I think intentions. In general, I've spoken about, but the point of an intention. So okay, so right. do you go? I mean, like, yeah, everyone does talk about intentions. Like, always give your intention when praying. Always give an intention when giving charity, or so on, and so forth. Mm. But not, you don't know why you give an intention, and being between you and Allah. Right, right. So, okay. like, I feel like that doesn't get spoken about enough. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? Like, why? I I never knew if you told me what two, three, four, five years ago. Right. Why do I have to give an? Intention? I couldn't give you an answer for it. I see. Do you yeah, go? I mean, no, that's I what I'm you. trying to get at today, and that's why I think we need to let share with our listeners. Mm. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Do you understand? No, what I, I, so, I mean, I, I, no, I, I, I yeah. Hear. So I think that that point and that aspect we need to go into and and speak about today. Yeah, okay. intention also is a very personal thing. 100%. Um, from within, within your mind, mm. within, within your thought process, and um, and a spiritual thing. And I think something I don't know about everyone else, but in the sub uh, Indian community when we were growing up, you know, we were taught the the Arabic um, niyat to stand up and pray oh, and yeah. like oh if you d- if you don't <laughs> say it like this <laughs> yeah, then yeah, your salah's yeah. not complete yeah. Yeah. Um, which isn't true 
it because your intention is in what your own you know your first language is what you're dreaming basically yeah. and if it's in english and you want to stand up before allah and say oh allah i'm praying you know my two rakat maghrib inshallah very soon because we're hungry oh, in terms of which um, language you say it in Obi. yeah inshallah um um so the other thing about intention as well is there's a, a non-islamic connotation to intention as well which is what i'll probably talk about today and that's um you know if you don't intend to get somewhere in life and if you don't intend to do something and if you if you know if you're messing about if johan was to just press uh i don't know if he uses mu- like keyboards or not but if you were in the music industry yeah. and you just started tapping away at a keyboard mm. with no intention no melody in mind mm. you're not going to get nowhere Absolutely. but if you intend in, in your head that you know what i've got a keyboard i've, I've invested in it i want to learn there's an intention there i want to learn a specific melody and get to this point by the ne- by next week where i know where my finger should go and what these notes are mm. then you've intended that by, by the end of the week that you want to get somewhere mm. and that helps with your progress and i think with the absence of intention there is no progress and you, there is no check on your progress mm. either it's a constant reminder isn't it mm-hmm. i think um would i been realizing all of us make intentions anyway don't we yeah, exactly. like you know you know we wake up in the morning and be like oh i'm going to have breakfast now Yeah. That's an intention. Yeah. But I feel like because we don't know the importance behind what it is, especially like when it comes to Muslims, like there's so much so much attached to the concept of intentions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe we we don't really grasp it quite quite the way we should. I think people get confused, not confused, I wouldn't say they give a sincere or pure uh, pure intention. Right. So say for example if I if I pull up an example now, um I've char- I've donated charity money, a mm-hmm. thousand pounds or so on to a charity. and i've said oh i'm i'm there my intention is to help that person yeah. i can't take that with me on the day of resurrection and say mm. to allah oh what about the money i gave right right no but then he's going to go back and say to me you gave it in the, with the intention of helping them not helping yourself in yeah. the the day of uh, resurrection what i would say to that as well is um with intention as well it's a lot like people start off with the right intention but sometimes they you have to always keep yourself you have to keep yourself reminded of the good intention right and that's what i think that's why you need to start with a pure intention yeah, it's and a sincere intention you've got to know what what your intention is for exactly well, yeah. so you got to make sure if you're donating to charity right yeah are you helping yourself in the afterlife or are you helping that person or are you doing it for self proclaimed fame do you know how they do it's people easy, do it on it's social it's media easy to and go so into on that. It's it is on. i mean that's why i feel like it, it, this is a topic that needs to be spoken about because mm. a lot of people you see now they'll do charity or they'll do so on and so forth mm-hmm. and do it on social media for the pre- uh, for the fame or with the wrong intentions and yes. it's not a pure yeah. intention it's a corrupt intention then mm. and you're not doing it for islam no but when you, when you're talking about that as well though like how do you know like if someone's doing it for the wrong reasons how, how do you know that like okay you can make an assumption like yeah. you can look at somebody's actions mm. and you can see the way they're conducting themselves and and sort of assume okay that guy or that girl ain't doing it for the right reasons yeah but you can't really you don't really know you don't know no. that's you know, true do you know what that's i mean that's the yeah. beauty of intention because th- there's only two like you can be the it's p- only between you and allah though, that's the same thing as well absolutely so if you're doing it if your intentions are pure you're going to do it properly and not between everyone else and you're not going to do it I for mean, that me, reason yeah. it's going to be between you and allah me personally if i see someone <coughs> and i see them doing things for the wrong intentions i mean obviously it's not our place to uh, exactly. ponder upon yeah. it too much but if i just see it there i'll see it and I'll just try to make well remind myself not mm. to go towards that. Mm. Pat, do you know what I mean? But okay, I got a qu- interesting question yeah. for you guys. Say for example, your close brethren or your close family members or whatever it may be yeah. um are involved in something Islamic, right? Yeah. And they outright tell you that the reason why they are partaking in that particular thing mm. is corrupt. Like you know, okay. like for example if okay, I'll I'll use myself as an example, yeah. Mm. If I came to you and I said, "Oh, you know, I'm singing to become famous and make money." Mm. Are you <laughs> <laughs> That's between me and Allah. But let's just say that that happens, right? And mm. you can clearly tell that this person is coming out with the wrong wrong motives, yeah. as you would say. How would you tackle that scenario? What would you do from your perspective as a friend, as mm. a family member? I'd I'd yeah. reelaborate that This intention is for you and Allah. So I'd say to you specifically, don't do this for this life. This life is temporary, which it is. Mm. I mean, one example that made it so what concrete this is is actually this opportunity on jumping on radio. Mm. I remember jumping on the training session and uh, Sister Shireen, I think she said specifically she said, "Know your intentions when jumping on radio." Mm. And I think that's what solidified it and made sure that I'm doing this for the right reasons. Mm. It's for the listeners to to give them that knowledge and to build myself 
build the listeners and build my co-hosts. Right. I think that's knowing your intentions mm. is specifically saying, so if I can say to you, oh, you're doing this to uh, show what Islam is about and using your voice in a positive way, don't do it for the wrong intentions because mm. this life, money, this life is temporary. Mm. You know what's crazy as well? I, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I've noticed many a times where, you know when you do something with corrupt intentions, mm. you always get found out, man. A hundred percent. You always get found out. Like yeah. I don't know what it is. It's like a spiritual thing behind it. But any, any times I've noticed someone doing something for the wrong motive, Sooner or later, they get found out. It's because, mm. and it doesn't end well at all. It's a lie after lie after lie. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's and not yeah. even that it's a lie. I think I wanted to reply to you earlier when you said, "Oh, how do you know uh, what someone's intention is right, and if right. it's corrupt or not?" And I think the thing about intention is, although it's between you and God, coming back to like a worldly perspective of it, how this is what helps you progress and get to where you want to be. Um, intentions always find their way to manifest themselves mm. in life. So obviously, if you have a noble cause that you want to start up and do whatever with, mm. you'll always go and y- your goal will be that. And when you get to it, there'll be a selfless reason behind it. So you mm. you honestly, hopefully just give everything to this. Um, but if you had a, set, a different intention where, you know, you wanted to do it because you wanted to be a trustee and you wanted to get a name and this, that, you'll realise because when you get to that stage... Yeah. Um, all you're after is that name. Oh, they call me trustee. They call me this. They call me the chairman of this charity. Whereas if you did it for the right intention, it doesn't matter who the trustee is. It doesn't matter if you put every sweat, blood and tear into it. You'll be happy to give it up. It's, that's just an analogy that I'm trying to draw. But essentially, all intentions manifest themselves because what the intentions are there for is to help you um, push yourself yeah. to a position that you want to be or push yourself to do something you want to do or push yourself to achieve something. Mm. 100% and I agree. Islamically it is to help you you know clear your mind before prayer that you know what this is why I'm praying because I'm praying before God to call out to him yeah. or this yeah, is why yeah. I'm fasting because I'm trying to burn away my sins mm. um, so it, every intention we're doing it for a manifest reason and if the manifest reason is impure then you know I know we shouldn't judge people but it will, will always manifest and like mm. you said mm. you can, it, people always get found out that's interesting you end on that because I was going to ask you actually do you think it's our place to judge people's intentions? Never. No, no, no not to no, judge. No, 100%. No, because judge. the thing is, it's our place to judge our own intentions. Yeah. Mm. Because everything we do, uh, like the hadith you mentioned, in the malak malu bin niyad, verily every action is with this intention. Mm-hmm. So we should actually, regardless of what we're doing, whether, you know, um, you're going on jogs every every evening mm. um, and... Uh, yeah, it's not wrong to think. Oh, I just wanna, I just wanna look better, feel healthy, yeah, yeah, and all yeah, of that. Exactly. Yeah. But a subconscious intention is that you know what this vessel is on loan to me from Allah. Absolutely. And your intention isn't wrong, mm-hmm. so you'll get reward for it. That I want to be fit and more active. But if you elevate that intention to you know what, and uh, have that conscious feeling that you know what this is from Allah, mm. this body is from Allah, and I'm gonna return it to Him soon. Let me look after it. That yeah, yeah. not only you, are you rewarded for keeping your body fit, but you're rewarded for, for that your intention, intention that you know yeah. what that's very. I'm doing it for Allah. I'm not just doing mm. it for the fact that I can you know lift heavier weights Absolutely. or be more active later yeah. because that's that's Im- an improvement in my body. But it's also a, a spiritual improvement that you know what it's for Allah. Mm. That I'm Absolutely. doing this. So yeah, yeah, hundred and ten percent. Coming back to your question and to answer that, we say we don't <coughs> judge, but I think it's, it should be a reminder in mm. a sense, and it's up to that person to take. Um, the feedback that you give as well and to see right, how, they, right. how it plays out basically a reminder in what way um, let's see so because how, how would you Shaf this is yeah. for you how would you refrain from reminding somebody about their intention without being judgmental anyway because to begin with you have to be judgmental to to assume that their mm. intentions corrupt <laughs> yeah, the, okay, which might not yeah. be the case alright then so say so let's go back to your uh, example of running um you know, to keep healthy is um, a good thing to do in Islam, yeah. obviously, right? To look after your body. But say if you're doing it for um, another intention and you've uh, said that to myself, see, that that's when that's when I would give out the reminder just to say, remember, just um, try to... Um, whatever you're doing for yourself, do it for the best and not for uh, worldly, gain, um, worldly gains, I'll say. Mm, so something like yeah, that, basically. No, I that. So I, would, I wouldn't um, remind someone without them telling me what the intentions were, um, intentions are. And if I thought that their intentions were something different than what they said to me, then that that, that that's when I'd actually go. Yeah. When I was when I was younger, growing up, but like in a, in a, because I used to study in a madrasa part time, right? Even yeah. I think everybody has to go into the mosque in the evenings. Yeah, of course. Um, 
I was given an advice by my teachers and, and many, many brothers that I used to do some form of dawah work with, they said one of the best ways to keep your intentions in check is to check it maybe three times during an action. So, for example, at the beginning, in the middle and in the end. Yeah. So, when you when you start in an action, you should ask yourself, why am I doing this action? Yeah. Is this for the sake of Allah? Or what is this for? Okay. And then, obviously, you know how how the devil works, you know, mm. y- whilst you're doing something. Like, I'll use my singing as, ex- as an example. Say, for example, like, because I don't want to comment on anybody else's. I may have started, say, with amazing intentions that I want to... Pro- provide a service an entertainment service for the Muslim community mm. so people can benefit etc etc but as my f- popularity increases mm. that intention could easily be corrupted but like, oh yeah, yeah you know course, I'm, I'm this and I'm that and I think that's a lot of people's downfall as well to be fair it is it is I mean I, we see this again no name is mentioned but we see this over and over again it mm. does happen it does happen and nobody's like nobody's safe from it no. and anybody can be prone to it because at any given p- point, your intention can be corrupted yeah. and you're at the game. So you have to be really sincere and really try your best to know of course. and always stick to why you started it. Yeah. So they've always said to me, that, you know, when I was younger, that always keep your intention in check. Check at the beginning, why am I doing this action? And during the middle, if Allah has grant- granted you some form of success in that action, mm. are you still on track? Are you still doing it for the right reasons? Are you still doing it for the sake of Allah? Mm. Or what reasons are you doing it for? And I'm not. I'm, I'm only saying like for the sake of Allah. Not everything has to be for the sake of Allah. For example, do you know what I mean? But mm. as long as your intentions are pure, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, that's that's I've one advice I was given. Yeah, I mean, talking back on your point of checking your intentions are pure. I mean, I was actually talking to one of my, my my manager today, and he gave me a good example in talking about intentions and and just avoiding sin. So one a very famous person, Muhammad Ali. So one way he would avoid sin is. Once you do something, he'd uh, he would he'd think it was haram. He'd l- light a match and he'd hold it under the palm of his hand. Yeah. And when he realized it was hot and you put his hand away, he'd realize, oh, how can I deal with this? Uh, I can't even hellfire. deal with this. How can I deal with the hellfire? Yeah. And then he realized it would turn away. So putting, giving yourself intention check and just making sure that what you're doing is, is, is basically wrong and you can avoid yourself by doing that. That's one way to avoid that as well, isn't it? Yeah. Mm, so, yeah, yeah so I think that's... A, when he told me that, I was like, whoa. That's that's a very fair point. To be fair, you don't think about it like that, mm. but once you put it, once you give yourself a proper physical way of thinking about it, then yeah, mm. it does make it yeah. slightly easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, no, a response to your question, um, Johan, mm. about is it our responsibility to judge? Hundred um, percent, no, right? Because you know there are judge mm. out there, and our judge is Allah. But answering your question sideways, mm. using something Shafi said earlier about. Um, reminders Mm -hmm. and also something you just said about how we were reminded when we were in Madrasa days right Um, and also if you allow me the example of um, last Ramadan when we were uh, active together in terms of your your work yes a sheikh approached you and he he also checked your intention for you absolutely yeah yeah, I think that responsibility is always on us this show Mm -hmm. itself is us doing that reminding people Mm -hmm. about intentions it's not we shouldn't wait for someone to make a mistake and be mm. like, oh, brother, why are you doing this, sister? Why are you doing this? Why are you taking pictures? This, that, blah, blah. Check your intentions. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. It should be, you know what? I can notice, Johan, <coughs> you're, you're on this path to something. Mm. Brother, just as a kind word of reminder, just remember to renew your intentions, inshallah. Mm. And again, rem- uh, sound, I sound like, um, <laughs> That's you know, the, no, the, the brothers are like, you know what? My ear is the closest organ to my mouth. Yeah. Right? This is a reminder <laughs> yeah. to myself, first yeah, and yeah, foremost. Yeah, yeah. Some Absolutely. of us some may com- come across some brothers. But it's true because me reminding you of your intentions is me reminding me of my intentions. Mm. Whereas if I am if I see you, you know what, Johan's like very popular, all the sisters are screaming for him this time. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I come up to <laughs> you. <laughs> and then I come up to you and be like, yo, Joe, I don't think you're doing it for the right reason. Right. That's wrong of me. Because mm. that's not for me to think it's you're doing it. For that's through like envy and jealousy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Look, so my question, okay, I'll give you a backdrop as to why I'm about to ask this question is, I heard a talk by Mufti Meng once, mm. and he was talking about judging, right? Okay. But it, it ties in nicely with what we're talking about here. He said, suppose you're on a train, and you, you s- there is a sister there, mm. and she's wearing a mini skirt and with tights, right? But the tights are covering her legs, but nevertheless, she's wearing mini skirts, yeah? Now... What's the first response of a Muslim? Immediately nowadays, we just think, Astaghfirullah, yeah. you know, their sister's going Jahannam. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? No. But, but what he said was, that hit me really hard. You know, certain things you hear yeah. and it just set, like, stays with you. Mm-hmm. It's one of the things. And he said, what if this same sister 
has gone through a struggle where maybe last week even she never even wore the tights. It was just a miniskirt. Mm. Maybe she went through an internal battle where even wearing her tights was a big step for her towards the positive. And yet you are, yet you are here condemning her to Jahannam. I think we shouldn't really so, so, yeah. so my question is, Shaf, is how would you mm. take away the judgmental aspect of something yeah, yeah. and then advise somebody based with pure intentions from yourself? Mm. How would you do, go about doing that? I would say, like, um, from that situation, um, we as Muslims shouldn't really um, put, um, say bad to anyone or wish bad upon anyone, right? So, right. and me, I'm a simple person, so what I would initially do is just be like, oh, man, like, I don't really, because I don't know what's going on with her or what she's been through or anything like that, but she's just there, isn't it? And I don't know much about her, so I'll just keep it simple and um, just be like, man, like, God, because that's the only thing that, can, that we can wish upon, isn't it? I think going to your point, I think the key word you said is advise. Mm. I think the only thing you can do in that situation is advise. So that's keeping your intentions pure and you're not judging. So advising her, lis- listen, you should be dressing up a bit more. But that's it. That's all you can say. And if she doesn't, then she doesn't. But if she does, then she does. Al- Alhamdulillah, you get that. But um, I think it's the, that's all it is, advice, isn't it? It's the same with vice versa with any situation. Mm. So it's just if you can give that advice and your, your intentions are pure when given advice... Mm. That's maybe where one way that will help her or him or so on. <coughs> so yeah, mm-hmm. advice is key. Go on, I take. What do you think? In that, s- so I'm I'm gonna answer it with the situation, the the example you gave. Yes, yeah, um, of, of the sister that. on the train. Um, I personally would not advise. Same. And yeah, I would. Yeah. I would go along the same and lines. My thought process is, I would advise a person that I know uh, their life, not the life story, but the story behind their, their journey so far mm. or the, the immediate journey that they're on. So if someone's opened up to me and said, you know what, I've struggled with mental health or I've struggled with um, you know, my Islam mm. and uh, I've struggled to put the hijab on, um, then I can advise them based on what I know of them. But this person I've met on the train, I've not even met. I just saw, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, the best thing we can do for her yeah. is make dua, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah of course, yeah. 100%. But not in a condescending way as well. Like, we should make dua with, the be- with, with her best interest in our yeah, minds. Of course, yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, agree, I completely agree with you. Yeah. Because you know what's mad? Like, over the past couple of months, because I grew up in a very strict way, mm. right? Where it's either black, Islam is black or white. You either do this or you do that, mm-hmm. and that's all there is to Islam. But as I grew older, Again, this is not me. Um, this is just my experience. I'm just talking about my experience. I found out that Islam is very colorful and it caters for individuals, right? Mm. So I spoke to many, many individuals, brothers and sisters, where they struggle so much with certain things. Like I got a very good friend of mine. He is an amazing lad, yeah? And like he's one of the best human beings you'd come across in terms of akhlaq, in terms of character, whatever it may be. But he really struggles to pray for some odd reason. Okay. I don't know. If this was me, maybe say three, four years ago, I'd be like, yo, can't believe, yo, you know, you, why oh, God's going to get you. <laughs> that that would have been me like a couple yeah, of years ago. Yeah, but yeah. now when I, when I, when I talk to this brother, I talk to him with a lot of, a lot of empathy and I try to put myself in his shoes, not thinking that I'm better than him because Allah has granted me the ability to pray, for mm. example. Mm. But I just think, imagine being in a position where it's, it's so difficult for you to pray. One minute. Okay, so we got a minute. We'll probably just continue with the with, with yeah. the topic once once we come back, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, it's an interesting one that you picked yeah, right yeah, on today. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate it. Appreciate the topic, man. It is something that um, needs to be spoken about yeah, as well. And you know, it's it's, um, it's, it's, it's for everybody. It's, yeah. it's not specific. I think everyone to needs to know what their intentions are when doing something. Absolutely. If, if, uh, there's something that the listeners want to hear as well. I speak about um, something that's relevant to the youth. Then, inshallah, just drop us a message on our social media. Um, and let we us are Better yeah. Together Show on Instagram, Be Together Show on Twitter, and you can find us on Facebook if you just search us as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's intentions. Tomorrow we'll be talking about fitness in Ramadan, something inshallah, else inshallah. that's very that important. Be a good one. Yeah. Um, Wednesday, inshallah, we'll be talking about uh, working in Ramadan and also touching back a bit on music for the first hour, um, something yeah. we were speaking about last Wednesday. But I don't think we've had enough time to cover it. Assalamu alaikum everyone, um, you're back listening to Ramadan Radio, um, this is the Better Together Show and today we're talking about intentions. 
Salam alaikum again, boys. So going back on uh, just before the advert came through, mm-hmm. we're talking about uh, intentions in general and intentions when doing something and how sincere and pure intentions are. Mm. Uh, just before the show, uh, the break, sorry, uh, Johan was just about to touch on a point about, uh, I believe it was just. What was it? It's just completely lost my mind. I, I completely lost it. It's lost my mind. <laughs> what was it? What was well? Um, well, we were just talking about in, in terms of just general intention and um, advising people. I'd say um, it was situation. a really good topic. So oh I yeah, yeah. I was, was it? Was it? Was I not talking about how you've given? S- a, you gave an example about. Yes, something. like so it's difficult. Certain things are difficult for certain people. Oh, oh the yes, yeah, 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 Like it's very easy for us to put everybody under the same blanket, yeah, mm. or, or pu- pu- uh, paint everybody, everybody with the same brush. Yeah. Mm. But we don't know who's struggling with what, man. Do you know what I mean? Like I've known mm. people that never used to pray, okay, yeah. but now that ha- they have started praying five times a day, Subhanallah, like you see them, mm. like they're so consistent with their salah, mm. and you know, may Allah reward them, may Allah keep them consistent. Amen. But it's actually amazing to see. But when we're on the other side, like, you know, when they're not praying, for example, mm-hmm. or a girl is not wearing the hijab, or a, or a guy is, for example, I don't know, he's just messing around, not praying, whatever it may be, we immediately jump to conclusions and be like, oh my God, you know, you're this and you're that, and, you know, God help you, and whatever it may be, you know, whatever comes to our mouth. Mm-hmm. But that same person, with a bit of love and n- nurturing and a bit of help, because, you know, not everybody needs advice always. Yeah. yeah? Not everybody's in need of advice. Not everybody's in need of da'wah, Verbally, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. If we have a group of friends, I have experienced this with my own group of friends where, alhamdulillah, there was two, three of us that used to pray, mm. okay, and some of us never used to pray to an extent where we used to go to the masjid, mm. they used to wait outside the masjid, and we used to pray, go inside the masjid and pray our salah, mm. right? Now, the thing is, now those same brothers, alhamdulillah, well, not, not all of them, but a couple of them have started praying. Not they before the lockdown they would constantly go to the masjid and pray their salah more than like the w- ones they were praying from before like myself and my other friends mm-hmm. that we were praying they are more consistent in the masjids than we were so how do you know that, that you know the thing's not going to flip on you exactly like yeah. you can sit here and judge people today and maybe Allah will take away that thing from you tomorrow because mm-hmm. you thought you were superior in comparison to someone else that wasn't in the same boat as you mm-hmm. so I think what we should do we should like Refrain from advice, okay? Because yeah. I think everybody's advising everybody now, man. Course, yeah. There's yeah. too much advi- yeah. <laughs> advising going that's true. on. That's very true. I mean, I mean that's of love yeah. going on. We should just, you know, if you show somebody love mm. and you just be there for them and just, just, just not say nothing, just be there, show them some love and respect, automatically there's something about that charm and that akhlaq mm. that pulls them towards that anyway. I didn't think about it like that. Yeah, but sometimes what tends to happen is you can give somebody an Islamic lecture for 10 hours using all the hadith and, and the Quran ayahs and whatever it may be. And thinking, subhanAllah, this is going to be so effective. What, what you really done is push that person away from the deen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're mm-hmm. going to be like, God damn, man. Like, I don't really want this for myself. You're saying, yeah, inv- advising me like you're better than me. Mm. Yeah. We grew up together. Who do you think you are? Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I was thinking about praying, but now I'm going to pray. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've come, I, uh, the reason I'm saying this, I've come across people like this. Mm. Where they got desensitized to the whole concept of um, deen. It's because so many people just bombarding them. Yeah, it's natural. Because... Um, Coming from, um, I hate to admit it, but coming from that Islamic background, Islamic mother so, um, background, there was a lot of times where, um, you know, Allah forgive me for this, but I wasn't praying because of Allah. I was praying because you know I had to. Us- Ustaji said, "Oh, uh, yeah. you know, it's Salah time, and he's yeah. watching me like a hawk." Absolutely, you know. <laughs> so that's a prime example when uh, I, I was younger, but it's a prime example when my intentions weren't correct. My intentions were I didn't want to get detention. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to be outside in the playground, so. Um, like you said you're desensitized because um, later on I realized that sometimes I do want to pray but it's a and I'm going to come on to a question that mm. an audience just asked um, it's when someone tells me to do something I'm reluctant to do it because that's, that's, a, lot anyway. people, that's, that's yeah, a lot of people that's a lot of people man. Yeah. I think yeah. that's a very like British young culture isn't yeah, it like yeah, rebellious yeah, culture yeah, like yeah, yeah. how can you tell me what to I do I wouldn't bro? even say it's rebellious I think it's just general like it's just built in us it's yeah, just the way we yeah, are yeah, it's probably yeah, a bit yeah. of pride so as well just a lot to be like people, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to do it Absolutely. just because you you asked me yeah, or you yeah. said it it's the same way when someone you're washing the dishes if somebody says it to you if somebody just tells you I love like if I came to you and I said Ridwan I'm about to pray Salah. Would you like to join me, bro? Yeah. Mm. There's, that's a different approach as opposed to Ridwan, pray, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. one of them ones. It's, it's about your approach at the same time. Mm. What I was the question that you um, said, Atiko? So the question came in on Instagram by Nizam.18. Mm. Um, and the question is, what are your guys' opinion 
um, on ego and do you feel like ego has Ooh. a large influence on one's intention? First patience. things first, big up Nizam. I know, love I know this brother. I love so this brother. Much. He's um, an absolute legend if yeah. you're listening, Nizam. Mashallah, mashallah. May Allah reward you and your family um, and protect amin. you guys. I mean, I mean. So, big question. Who wants to so go first? This question. Oh. Uh, I'm going to tell you who's going first because he said it. Um, oh, okay. But this question is something we might discuss again on one of our two hour slots because ego is a big thing. Yeah. And I know Johan and Ridwan and Shafi hopefully <laughs> has a lot to say about <laughs> it. And the reason why I say that is the p- um, person asked, get Shafi to answer. We'll, we'll, all, <laughs> like, we'll, 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 all, we'll all answer, inshallah. But Shafi, if you want to start oh, us off. Firstly, obviously, thank you, Nizam.18. <laughs> <laughs> For baiting you out. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know my words with that wise. Well, um, what I'd say is um, ego, in a sense. Um, everyone has ego, whether they know it or not. And I think mm. um, it's not always there. It depends on the situation. And that's when the ego arises, right? Mm. And um, I mean, think about it like, you know, a brother, and a, like two brothers, because like, I've got two younger brothers, right? Um, they, they get along with each other well, but then say if something happens, right? So one person um, doesn't listen to the other, right? Um, First off, they just start off arguing and stuff like that. And next thing you know, it just spirals down. Comes ego, mm. yeah. That's yeah, with the, that's that, when that's oh, a form of ego. Yeah. Say for example, your brothers were they're playing PS4. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm better than you at PS4. That's it, an ego thing. That, but yeah. I think with age, I mean, most cases then I can't say I can't say with everyone. It becomes more serious. It, it comes it? more serious, but then ego isn't as many as as about. But it's different. I can't say for that. That's but it, yeah. There's so much in terms of like there's so many uh, situations we we say where ego arises isn't mm. it and i think the main thing to to do is if you do see a sense of ego um within a conversation or um in a situation it uh, depends if you're um if you're involved in that situation as well because mm. if you're not involved in that situation then personally i'd think i wouldn't get involved because yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah. I don't want to put my uh, words in and um enter that situation as well because of it course. could get nasty you never know yeah um but i would say if um as a friend, if um I've seen someone that has maybe got a bit of pride or whatnot, I'd give them a chance to just maybe like calm down to see like if it's a recurring thing. Yeah, 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 if it's yeah, a recurring yeah. thing. If it's a recurring thing and you know you try to help, um give a solution, just pro- probably try to say, Yo, bro, just don't say that, you know, you got f- fifty thousand pounds in the bank or something yeah, like that. Yeah. I don't know. I think with ego it's a very, very dangerous trait mm. in general. Is it's it's uh, a trait that's been like like it's coming into like uh, how can I say it? Not, um, that's similar to like the traits of uh, shaitan. Is mm. I think I'm not too sure. It's a about pride it. thing. It's yeah. a pride thing, but I think there's a difference between like ego um, is a very dangerous mm. trait, though. I mean, that's where your intentions become impure. Impure when yeah. inten- when ego comes in. So when you have an ego, that's when you're you're you just want to be the best person, or you want to be better than this person, and so on. So I think when a when person is I mean my me myself I try to avoid people with ego mm. and pride. So like um I say, agree. like I just I think it's such an I, I hate that trait. You think honestly, the the arrogance it's a fact. very yeah, yeah, arrogant. I mean we had a conversation, or do you remember me saying yeah, I mean, yeah, it's something yeah. like that, but arrogance and trait ego is just yeah, it's it's a trait that I avoid from people like is the reason why Shaitan got kicked out of je- Exactly yeah. ego. He thought he's exactly. better than us, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. It's why I mean, he it's lost his way, isn't it? Very scary trait. Oh, I would say, how very do we help those people that have maybe a bit of pride, or is there? I don't think it's our place to help. Yeah, it's not, I think it's not. you focus on yourself. Yeah. I think that's I the mean, best with way. With myself, I think wh- how I learned well, is so it's a close friend of yours. Then I think to be fair, wha- how I learned is like with my with me how I've learned different lessons is through life and people. Mm. And I remember having a conversation. I was uh, I, I don't know. I, I think I must have. Uh, I think it was a long time ago. I was back in college. And uh, I was one of the, uh, out my friends, I was one of the first to get a job. And I remember saying, oh, um, oh, I'm getting paid and this, that. And I remember my, one of my boys sitting me down and saying to me, listen, bro, like, why are you acting like this and that and so on? Like, you shouldn't that be saying such a thing. £3.73. £3.73 at Sports Direct. Yeah, and, great and, days. And, and but even, alhamdulillah, even it, was then, yeah, and it was something. And it's it's something. And I, and I felt like, oh, it's something. And I'm I'm at the boys. I've got my job and this, that. And I felt like, and it was it was ego that was coming out of me. Mm. I remember one of my boys sitting me down. Shout out, yes, I don't really speak to her anymore, but. He taught me such a good lesson that day, and he said to me, "You shouldn't be like that in, certain, in front of people. Like, look at us, like we don't have jobs." Mm. And I took her away from that day, and I've from to this day. This was five, six years ago. I remember, and I've always taken it with me. Ego is such a dangerous thing. That's what I mean, though. He gave obviously. me that advice. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to places. character building as well. Yeah. 100. I think this is obviously this is another topic we should touch on as well. I think it's it's, it's more to do with the people that you hang around with. 100. percent And I think, and I think him being around me was the reason I. Avoided that, and I wanted to do not get away from it. egotistic and 
pride very pride uh, inserted Prideful, yeah. Yeah. yeah um yeah i mean what i found is with with ego cuz i you guys know me personally right yeah. you know how i am so i don't really care for the, these things mm. when it comes to individuals so if somebody does come and try to have you know define themselves materialistically mm. like b- based on they want they demand respect based on the things they have or whatever it may be they're never going to get that from me do you know what i mean so i just treat them like i treat anybody else normally so i think with egotistical people, the best way to tackle it is just don't fuel the ego. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah? Just yeah, treat definitely. them normally. That would kill them yeah. till they learn how to not be <laughs> yeah, that yeah, 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 in yeah. that particular manner. The advice that I was given mm-hmm. um, when I was very young, <clears throat> again, and especially before I started use, uh, doing my music stuff, is that every little thing that I have, whether that's my platform or whether that's mm-hmm. growing, whatever it may be, is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Um, um, it's, it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah? And Allah can take it away at any point. Mm. Yeah, If Allah wants, I can wake up tomorrow without the ability to speak. 100%. Without the ability to see. Without the ability to function properly. So the fact that Allah has made me in such a perfect manner. Everything's functioning, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. I can see, I can hear, I can breathe, I can eat, so on and so forth. Yeah. For that, I'm grateful. And none of this is does belong to me. I know my mother says something very crude. Uh, but it, it, it makes sense. My, I know, big up my mom. I love you, mom. I don't know if she's listening, she's probably listening. But she, this piece of advice was given to me by my mother since I was very young. She says, no matter how much of a big gangster you are, every time you go to the bathroom, you got to take your trousers off. Okay? <laughs> no matter how much of a big gangster you are. So Allah has created us very um, in, in a yeah. fashion which is very like, we're very, um, what's the word that I'm looking frail. for? Frail. Yeah, we're very frail, yeah, man. Yeah, like yeah. a little thing happens, yeah. we get ill. Mm. You know, we're not perfect. And everything we do have, is grant given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. So I think the more we remind ourselves and purify our intentions, 100%. coming back to our intentions, that will help us with our ego. Mm. Yeah. 110%. By the way, I've had a private question texted to me by somebody. Uh, I think this person was on live last week when we were doing our it's show. about cooking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they oh said gosh, oh no. <laughs> they, they basically asked me, that. Have you guys, what have you guys done in the past week to help your families, to, to your mother, uh, your mothers and your sisters? Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to say who it's by? Because I think I don't know if it's the same person that asked on the chat. He, he probably who is who asked? Uh, Mumina. Yeah, Bundesco. that's her. That's her. Yeah. Yeah. So she asked, "What have we? If we've kept to the challenge that was set last week, mm. um, I have. Okay. Oh yeah, um, your so meal looked delicious. So oh, nice. I'll bring it in one day. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yes. Um, so I should have brought it in today, but all right. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <That'd be nice. laughs> so I managed to um, steal a few, steal a recipe from a few friends, mix it together, and make my own thing. So I made some pasta for iftar. Um, help my mom out because she's always making iftar um johan i've been told someone else has been making your iftar <laughs> <laughs> and then yep. shafi and ridwan any update uh well to be fair i don't know if you like know but my mom started her own thing on instagram oh, yeah, yeah. The kitchen. Mm-hmm. i've been helping her with a, a lot with that so when i come home I'll help her make the, the burais and wire and so forth. And I'll go that's, deliver that's them as well. That's what, that's what we're, we're going to be opening our fast today with, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Big up, Khala. Uh, yeah. Ridwan, your mom. She's got her own business. Guys, go check it out on Ridwan's page. Ma, uh, Ramadan. Uh, Maz Ramadan. Kitchen. Ramadan Kitchen, is it? Yeah, Maz Ramadan, Ramadan Kitchen. kitchen yeah. And I'm really looking forward to that, man. Uh, and I know she's a very good cook as well. So Thank you. Looking Thank forward to that, inshallah. Man. So that's two out of four that I have been helping. Shafi? Yeah, myself. Um, so <laughs> I, I, <laughs> do you know what you've been doing? I'll say what he's been saying. Yeah. Right, we I'll don't know. I'll Snapchat. <laughs> what you'll do, he'll, he'll send us a picture of his cutting board <laughs> and he's cut some audios, but really and truly, it's his mom or sister. You know the one that said yesterday, it was it myself? Oh, and, my so brother. and Atti could agree with me in here. What he did was. He's eating something. He's got a dirty plate. He left on the side of the plate on the sink. On the sink. I went crazy. <laughs> All right, God, me if, if, if you really know me, you'd know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> For the entertainment. Of course, I went back. I, I, I don't know your turn. I went back and I washed it up. Did the whole one. That's the one. Um, yeah. But I mean, in a sense, for myself, I haven't actually done any uh, cooking because I'm not great at it. Um, I've got, you know, um, two... Um, sisters and my mother as well they were great cooks so I let them do that but wow do, no, <laughs> <laughs> wow but listen listen it's because they don't mind doing it so obviously like I'm not gonna how do you know the intentions though why Ooh. they do mind Ooh. all right the wife like just said wife just said oh they said oh Shafi it's all right you don't have to that's do it that's still my intention oh. that, I think that's maybe <laughs> in case they don't want you in their area exactly they don't want yeah. something. Mm. but your sisters do make mashallah very nice food because we did try it and that dawah thing was delicious that tiramisu was amazing um, yeah so what I'll do then instead is you know just um, wash the dishes and all of that kind of stuff really just Mm. do do that after the post meal we all do that we all do that yeah we all do that I think I think 
I don't Mumi, I'm guilty Mu, of that most. Mumina so. if uh, I think it's Mumina Mumina B underscore if that answered your question two of us have and just for your sake and the other listeners we'll keep the challenge going for Johan and Shafi and extend it the for whole Ramadan the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say the week but yeah whole ra- well at least do something whole Ramadan inshallah. inshallah I haven't done anything I think my mom's quite disappointed actually mm. oh. um, and I don't even have an excuse as to why I haven't done anything other than laziness and that's just the God's honest truth so sorry mom but hopefully I'll I'll try my best inshallah this week. Are you at least feeding the cat. I no, I haven't been doing that. I don't <laughs> do that. That's my dad. My dad does that. My dad does that. So I've just not been doing anything in terms of around the house. So we, we should we do that inshallah. Yeah, make an intention. Um, yeah, thanks for that question. Answer Put me on the spot, mate. But yeah, okay. <laughs> Answering uh, Nizam 18's question though regarding um, the ego about the ego. So he, it was a, it was a double barrel question about uh, what are you guys' opinion on ego, and. Has do you think it has a large influence on intention, one's intentions? It goes hand yeah, in hand. Yeah, it does. 100% yeah, 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 it goes it hand does, in hand. It can but corrupt but intentions as well. It can. 100%. Yeah. Like I said, you know, like, you know, I was, I was speaking to a singer from America yesterday. He's starting off. He's just, he's very good, mashallah. Mm-hmm. He's very good. And uh, he, he just, he's just starting off. And I was ch- having a chat about this with him. And he's like, bro, what is it with these singers with some with some name behind them? Like, you know, they're quite well known. Mm-hmm. They don't even want to talk to you. They don't want to reply to you. Yeah. And I asked for some. I asked the brother for some names, right? And he did drop some names. Who is that? Not me. No. <laughs> That's not me either. Refrain from t- using sorry, guys. On the um, but yeah, carry on, Joe. Yeah. Okay, so I, w- I was just speaking to him, and he was like, "These brothers don't even want to reply. I don't understand why." And I was thinking, wh- why don't they reply? Because uh, when I messaged them, and then I thought, ah, so I, I started speaking to these brothers when they were a lot less known, mm. right? So that's when we started speaking. Now they're a lot more well-known. Mm. They're not replying to people. This is why Jay of Oko's underscore speaks to us. What's <laughs> 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 uh, that? No, but then, me and Johan had this conversation, I think, yesterday or the night, yeah, night yeah, before, yeah. about um, it doesn't matter who you are. Because we've noticed it with some shuyukh as well. Mm. And anyone at a pedestal where they have that level, mm. there's a, a, a cliquey mentality where people my level, yeah, let's interact with them. But people mm. below, um, you know, there's not much help there. Then there's no hand reaching out for them. 100%. And the reason why I mentioned it in, in mentioning this is because of the, the ego and intention bit. So, well, I don't know. Allah knows the intention. And I take a lot of good out of them. Mm. And when I listen to them, and uh, you know, when, when I listen to the speeches and then I see how I take a lot of good out of them, um, but when I'm interacting with them, are they the same person as the person on stage? And mm. th- again, everything is manifest. Anything, everything is. Uh, you can see it. And what I see is something that hurts me because it's <coughs> it's this culture that shouldn't be Islamic, but it's human, and it's from driven from ego. Everyone has an ego, id and all of that, but the ego is overpowering. And it's come to a stage where you know what? Um, why should I help you? And you know my mate has a bigger platform. I'd rather help him. Yeah. And that's something ego. That that that's ego behind it. What do you say? Do but you at the same time, I can I can also look at it from the other side of the fence, where when you get a bit a bit well known and you have a decent amount of following, I'm guessing you'd get a lot of messages daily, out of which maybe I don't know sixty seventy percent are bogus messages, right? Mm. Yeah. How many of them are you going to reply to? That's true. And on top of that, how how do you filter through them and know, okay, this brother's been genuine. Let me reply and have a chat with this brother. Mm. So what ends up happening is because you're treating the whole message board the same way, you you end up ignoring sincere people too. And then mm. they get hurt. Mm. And then they get spiteful. Mm. I have faced this myself where uh, when, I was, when I was just up and coming and you know not much was happening... And I was obviously messaging people, trying to t- trying to network and whatever. And people weren't replying. So I got very sour. I got very sour. Um, but now, alhamdulillah, a couple of years down the line, I understand now. Like, mm. I, I sort of get it uh, from the other side of the fence as well. But I think one thing I want to say before before the show ends is the biggest thing you can do regarding all these matters, guys, is make dua. Yeah. Sincerely always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah... Keep us sincere in our intentions Amen. and protect us from pride and ego Amen. and grant us Amen. humility. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. something that I constantly say in my dua mm-hmm. and I hope um, everybody can makes that dua for themselves yeah. as well. Yeah. Inshallah. I mean, quickly to. touching up on your point as well, just being sincere and pure with your uh, dua and your intentions and doing it for yourself and for your afterlife as well. But Amen. yeah, I think that's something you need to take, take on board. Absolutely. Shafi, any last words you want to leave? 
I'd say, yeah, keep intentions clean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and just try to um, make yourself a better version of yourself, I'd say. Because the, there's, every day is in, you know, um, a new page. And, um, yeah, just try to keep yourself and keep your intentions clean. Uh, keep your character clean as well. And hopefully people 100%. can see that from Inshallah. you and take something from there. Inshallah. And um, I think it's the same sentiment with me as well. And, uh, you know, I pray that Allah gives us all the... Um, Keep us on the right intention, right mm. path. Keep our knees straight because uh, we want to keep this going long term, inshallah, inshallah, and help everyone else. And inshallah, if you can help us by keeping us in in your du'as, um, and then I think the last say I'm going to leave with Johan, and the, the why I'm going to leave it with you is um, we've got a song releasing, and it's I See Fire um, by yeah. J Vocals. It should be releasing Wednesday at inshallah. six pm, inshallah. Mm. And before I play, I want to ask you. Was there any intention behind creating this song in particular? Yeah, this song is very dear to me. I'll just make it very brief. Uh, very dear to me because obviously we know the state of the Ummah globally. Huh? One minute. One minute. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it quick. We know the state of the Ummah globally. And this, is, this song is actually a cover of uh, a mainstream song. So I thought, why not let me, let me co-write this with somebody and um, express my feelings towards this particular mm. topic and just put it all together. And Alhamdulillah... For the first time ever in my working career when it comes to music, I'm very happy with this particular track. So I hope everybody enjoys it, inshallah. This is an exclusive. It releases on Wednesday, uh, 6 o'clock, inshallah. So I goes, uh, here's an exclusive. Um, huh? Keep talking. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be, you know, articles, I was told there's a minute left. But well, there is, but you've, you've still got have a I just seconds. Have I just whisked through yeah, that? Yeah. Let's just quickly talk about what's happening tomorrow. Uh, not I mean, that long. Oh, yeah, uh, go yeah, ahead. Quickly, tomorrow. so guys, tomorrow we're talking about fitness in Ramadan. So we've got two he quite good I guess to be fair so we've got Fitness Reborn uh, Nazi Katoon mm -hmm. on tomorrow and then we've got Zaf the PT on tomorrow as well yeah. Yeah. Uh, something that you all want to listen into it should be a very Shala. good topic yeah Trees, I see fire. 